Let's get right into it. Number 8. Motion Sickness Imagine you are sitting in the backseat of a car, trying to read a text on your phone. Suddenly, a wave of nausea hits you so hard you consider rolling out of the moving vehicle just to make it stop. Why does this happen? You aren't sick. You didn't eat bad sushi. You're just confused. Motion sickness is essentially a sensory argument between your eyes and your ears. Your inner ear feels the motion of the car and tells the brain, we are moving at 60 miles per hour, but your eyes are glued to your phone screen, which is stationary. So they tell the brain, we are sitting perfectly still. In nature, this specific disconnect feeling movement but not seeing it never happened. If you were a caveman, the only time your sensory inputs would hallucinate like that was if you had ingested a neurotoxin. So, your brain concludes, we have been poisoned. Eject the stomach contents immediately. Motion sickness is just your body's way of frantically trying to save you from a poisonous berry you never ate. Number 7. The Hypnic Jerk. You are drifting off to sleep. You're warm, you're cozy, and your conscious mind is slowly shutting down the factory for the night. It's the most peaceful moment of your day. Suddenly, your entire body spasms like you just licked a car battery. You jolt awake, heart hammering against your ribs, absolutely convinced you were plummeting off a cliff. Congratulations, you just experienced a hypnic jerk. This isn't a medical condition. It's just your brain being a paranoid micromanager with outdated software. Here's the deal. As you fall asleep, your muscles relax and your heart rate drops. This is normal. However, a very primitive, lizard brain, part of your nervous system interprets this sudden relaxation not as sleep, but as falling out of a tree. Since your ancestors used to sleep on branches to avoid getting eaten by saber-toothed tigers, total muscle relaxation meant death. So, your brain panics and sends a massive electrical override signal, a neural scream to twitch your muscles and catch yourself before you hit the jungle floor. Basically, your nervous system is ruining your nap to save you from a danger that hasn't existed for two million years. Number 6. Pruny Fingers You've spent too long soaking in the bathtub, and now your fingertips look like withered raisins or the sad, deflated tires of a swamp buggy. For decades, scientists just assumed this was osmosis, your skin waterlogging and swelling up. But it turns out your brain is actually doing this on purpose. This wrinkling is an active nervous system response. If you have nerve damage, your fingers won't prune. Why? Because the wrinkling creates channels in your skin, acting like tire treads or drainage grooves on a basketball. When your hands get wet, this actively increases your ability to grip objects underwater or in the rain. Your brain is literally transforming your fingertips into all-terrain tires because, evolutionarily speaking, if you were in the water, you were either hunting slippery fish or trying not to drown. So, your body is just trying to make sure you don't drop the prehistoric fishing spear. Number 5. The Call of the Void You are standing on a high balcony or the edge of a subway platform. You are perfectly happy, mentally stable, and have zero desire to die. Yet, a small, intrusive whisper in the back of your mind says, Hey, what if you just... jumped? You recoil in horror, wondering if you are secretly broken. You aren't. This phenomenon is so common the French gave it a fancy name, l'appel du vide, or the call of the void. Paradoxically, this isn't a wish to end it all. It's a misunderstood survival signal. According to researchers, this is a communication lag between your survival instinct and your conscious brain. Your fear center sees the drop, screams danger, and sends a signal to your muscles to freeze or retreat. Your conscious brain, which is a bit slower, notices your body reacting to a threat but doesn't fully process the danger yet. It gets confused and rationalizes the physical urge to move as an urge to jump. Basically, your survival instinct is so aggressive that your conscious mind misinterprets the safety warning as a death wish. Number 4. The feeling of being watched. You are alone in an empty room, maybe grabbing a snack from the fridge late at night, and suddenly, you feel a prickling sensation on the back of your neck. You instinctively spin around, convinced there's a pair of eyes locked onto you. But nope just you and the expired yogurt. This feeling, known as scopesthesia, is your brain's overly aggressive gaze detection system at work. Humans are hypersensitive to the direction of a person's gaze. We have white sclera which make it very easy to detect where someone is looking. 
even from a long distance. In the ancestral environment, knowing if you were being watched was a matter of life or death. Was that a predator? A rival tribe member? Since your brain prioritizes spotting a potential threat over being accurate, it's easier for it to trigger a false alarm and make you feel watched than to miss the real threat and end up as dinner. Your Spider-Man sense is basically just evolutionary paranoia. Number 3. Public Speaking Panic You are perfectly comfortable talking to 50 people one-on-one, -on -one, but the moment you step onto a stage and hold a microphone, your throat closes up, your hands sweat, and your heart races like a startled zebra. You are experiencing the most powerful fear known to civilized humanity, glossophobia. You aren't afraid of the audience's words. You're afraid of their judgment. In the days of the tribe, being judged negatively by the group was a sentence of social isolation, and being cast out meant certain death by starvation or predation. The rush of adrenaline and cortisol you feel is the full-blown fight-or-flight response designed to save you from a tiger. Today, your brain interprets the risk of saying something awkward or failing to perform in front of the tribe as the same level of existential threat as a tiger attack. Basically, your nervous system is convinced that stumbling over your words will lead to you being eaten by a leopard. Number 2. The Uncanny Valley You are looking at a high-tech robot, or maybe a character in a CGI movie. It has realistic skin, human eyes, and perfect teeth. Technically, it looks like a person. But deep in your gut you feel a wave of cold, primal revulsion. You don't just dislike it. You want to set it on fire. Welcome to the Uncanny Valley. This is the specific emotional dip that happens when something looks almost human, but isn't quite right. Scientists believe this is an evolved biological alarm system designed to keep you away from corpses and sick people. In the wild, if a member of your tribe looked human but was pale, moved stiffly, or had cold, dead eyes, they were likely a carrier of a deadly pathogen, or well, dead. To keep you from cuddling a corpse and catching the plague, your brain developed a visceral disgust response to anything that triggers the human but wrong radar. So when you get creeped out by a wax figure, it's just your immune system trying to keep you from hugging a dead body. Number 1. Pareidolia At around 3 in the morning, you wake up thirsty, roll over, and your heart instantly stops. There, standing in the corner of your room, is a shadowy, hunchbacked demon waiting to harvest your soul. You panic, fumble for the light switch, and, oh, it's just your pile of laundry on a chair. Why does your brain default to demon instead of denim? This is pareidolia, and it is basically your brain's obsession with finding faces where they don't exist. From the man in the moon to Jesus on a piece of toast, your brain is hardwired to recognize facial features above literally everything else. Evolutionarily speaking, this is a safety feature called agency detection. Imagine you are a prehistoric human walking near a bush. If you mistake a shadow for a tiger, you run away, look stupid, and survive. But if you mistake a tiger for a shadow, you get eaten. Nature selected for the humans who were paranoid enough to see faces everywhere. The chill humans who didn't see monsters in the shadows didn't live long enough to pass on their genes. So, when you see a ghost in your hallway, it's just your visual cortex choosing to be terrified rather than dead. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.